Just how big can crocodiles get? Let's use science to find out. In this video, we're playing hard and fast with the term crocodile, instead of referring to all crocodiliforms. That includes alligators and caimans, as well as multiple prehistoric crocodilomorphs, which we'll explore in a moment. Spoilers! When we say size, most of the time we're talking about mass rather than length, since mass measures how much matter the animal is made out of. For example, although an anaconda is considerably longer than an elephant, the elephant is larger because it has greater mass. Okay, crocodilians. These massive predators, the biggest extant reptiles in the world, have long fascinated and terrified humanity. Their chilling hunting techniques, intelligence, dragon-like ferocity and power are all exceptional, but the purpose of this video series is to find out how big animals can get. To begin, the largest living species of crocodile is Crocodilus porosus, or the saltwater crocodile. Its habitat extends from Australia to Southeast Asia and even the Indian coast, giving it a territory bigger than the Roman Empire. Incidentally, my favorite extant animal, salties have a bite force measuring more than 16,000 newtons. And they are huge. The biggest reliably measured salty, Lolong, measured 6.17 meters from head to tail and weighed 1,075 kilograms. To gain an understanding of how big that really is, it's equivalent to the combined weight of nine Dwayne Johnsons. It's also more than twice the size of an average male polar bear. But if we want to really examine the limits of crocodile size, we need to jump past the dubiously measured croc that got away stories of today, and go straight for the prehistoric giants. There are quite a few ancient crocodile forms that surpass the salty in size, but their traditional three-way competition for the biggest of all time is between Sarcosuchus imperator, Dinosuchus rio grandensis, and Purosaurus brasiliensis. Sarcosuchus imperator, famous for its coverage by National Geographic, was an African super predator in the Cretaceous period. It resembled a modern gharial, which is why it's interesting that Sereno et al. 2001 used gharials and saltwater crocodiles to scale its size based on the skull length. Those methods arrived at the oft-quoted 12 meters and 8 tons we've all seen cited. However, Farlow et al. 2005 utilized femur-based estimates on a subadult. Their much lower estimate when scaled to an adult individual yields 3,215 kilograms. That may seem like a massive drop from Sereno's numbers, but O'Brien et al. 2019 provided a mass of 4,296 kilograms by eliminating the salties from the equation and just using the much more anatomically similar gharials. Its length was also reduced to 9.4 meters as a high estimate. But hey, 36 Dwayne Johnsons ain't bad. Dinosuchus rio grandensis, essentially an American alligator and super soldier serum, was scaled by Farlow et al. 2005 to measure 10.6 meters long. Schwimmer 2002 mentions 12 meter 8.5 ton measurements, but considering that the 10.6 meter specimen is the largest known individual of the species, there's not really any skeletal evidence to support those inflated numbers. If we apply Schwimmer's mass estimates to a 10.6 individual, it ends up weighing 5.85 tons. That's considerably larger than Sarcosuchus, but still nowhere near the T-Rex sized monster commonly reported in the press. On the Dwayne Johnson scale, however, Dinosuchus brings in the hefty score of 49. Purosaurus brasiliensis, despite its cheesy smile, may be the most powerful predator of these three super crocs, although it too suffers from some exaggerated numbers. In 2007, Jorge Moreno Vernal calculated a length of 10.3 meters and mass of 5.16 tons from a 1.4 meter skull. Aureliano et al. 2015 arrived at 12.5 meters and 8.4 tons from the same skull, but upon further review in February 2015, it was revealed that they used an erroneous definition of dorsal cranial length that resulted in abnormally large scaling. The revised calculations were 10.9 meters and 5,600 kilograms. The paper does point out that because of the extremely robust nature of Purosaurus' skull, it could have had an augmented musculature in the neck, leading to a higher mass than calculated. Then there's the Juara River specimen mentioned in Reliano's paper. Described in 1967, the isolated mandible is 1.75 meters long, dwarfing the complete skull that the team utilized. Keep in mind that any reconstruction from a single jaw is going to be speculative, but we can try to figure out how big its owner was. Number, math. Oh shoot, that's big. Now, these numbers may be large, but remember that these are calculations from an old and very obscure paper cited in passing for a specimen we no longer have, to my knowledge. I'm not saying this is the official size for poor source by any means, but it makes you think, doesn't it? Nature has a way of breaking the numerical limits that we as human beings try to place on it. No matter how many fossils we find of a given species, we're only going to have a tiny percentage of the population to work with. There is always a bigger fish. Thank you.